I first heard about Terry and her daughter Micah through one of our staff members, Mike Rogers, who's over our children's um, department. Um, during our Wednesday staff meetings, we often spend time towards the end in prayer um, for things that are going on in our lives, but specifically for our members and our attenders who come to Zion and people that we've heard of. Um, Mike had simply put out a prayer request just asking that we would pray for Micah because she was born with a really critical situation where I believe it was the right side of her heart. The valves were broken, they weren't functioning properly, and things were at a really, really critical, delicate state. She was born with uh, three congenital heart defects and also um, Down syndrome. 70% of the blood on her right side of her heart went backwards and 30% on the left side that goes up to the circulation went backwards. So they were like amazed that she even survived, that she made it to birth. Um, and so if we fast forward now up until the spring, I had the amazing opportunity to um, talk to Terry, Micah's mom, just about how things have been going. Um, and you know, if you've ever called somebody or reached out to somebody who's going through a really difficult situation and you kind of want to be a support to them but then in turn you end up finding out that, that person ends up blessing you so much that's exactly what happened in my talk with Terry. Um, Terry is an amazing woman of strength I mean in terms of people of faith um, to see if you could really understand what she goes through on a day-to-day -day basis as a single mom just taking care of a child with special needs one of the things that she shared is that when Micah had one of her first surgeries last year the doctors just thought the chances for Micah to make it were slim to none and so just believing that God just wanted to do something major in Micah's life Terry just had the faith in God to say yeah, let's move forward they said we're gonna have to operate on Micah's heart again for the third time but this time they said you know this operation will fix her it'll help her a whole lot but the danger of it is Micah's still too small. So they gave me a choice. They said, you can take her home, and if you don't want to do anything, you don't have to do anything. And let nature take the course, and eventually she's gonna die. And the other option is you can have the surgery, but she might not come back. So it's like, how do you choose between watching your child die or having a surgery that will take her away. So I told him, I said, you know what? I want the surgery. My baby deserves a chance. And I told her surgeon, I said, you know what? God gave me the gifts to fix her. So I know in my heart that you're gonna fix her. And don't worry about anything else because God will do the rest. And so here we are today and Micah is a year old and things aren't perfect, things aren't always pretty, but I remember being on the phone with Terry and hearing Micah, just like every little baby, just cooing and giggling in the background. And so while there are those moments, you can't forsake the times that when things are really difficult, when Terry's just trying to make ends meet and just learning more about her story and the fact that, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, on a week-to-week -week basis, things are tight. You know, she's in a situation where um, because of the care that Micah gets, she needs state medical care. But with state medical care, she's only allowed to make a certain amount of money every month. Well, guess what? She still has real bills and things that need to get taken care of. And so she's just really just making things happen. Um, one thing that she shared with me that I just thought was really, really special is that just in her time with God, you know, she's been asking God, God, would you just send somebody, would somebody just see us? If someone could just see us and care enough about us, um, I just really believe that would make a difference and so that's what she's believing she's believing that God would not have allowed Micah to survive all of this unless he had a really big plan for her life this is Terry Ware and her daughter Micah come on up Nicole Um, when we learned of this story, it just touched all of our hearts and our, our staff, and we just, we just wanted to try to do something to try to just make her life a little easier, a little help happier. And so um, we, we, we shared it with some sponsors. We told your story to some people, and we have some sponsors who are willing to help and, 
And one of the things we got was a $200 gift card from Target, Target for your daughter. And so we want to make sure you have that $200 gift card from Target. It's, it's not a lot, but <laughs> amen. We'll hold it for you. She, she can, you can give it to Nicole. That's her friend. Also, Chick-fil-A. Uh, it wasn't Chick-fil-A. The manager of the two Chick-fil-A's, one over in the boulevard and the one at exit 13, his name is Keith Singletary. His, uh, he and his wife donated $100 to your family and Chick-fil-A gift cards so y'all can have some chicken and stuff. <laughs> Regal Cinema. Heard about your story? They gave us movie tickets for you and your family so you can go see uh, Jump the Broom or whatever. <laughs> this was big. We got a $500 gift card to Marshalls for you, Terry, to buy clothes. One of the things that she didn't say in the video is that because she has, has such limited resources, she hasn't been able to buy herself any clothes. And so, um, and Marshalls, $500. Girl, get you some outfits. <laughs> also, um, there's a lady named Ashley LaRue. You know Ashley LaRue? She works at a place called Randolph Cree Salon in D.C. Yeah. Yeah. She said, that's your hairdresser? She said, when we told her your story, she says, for one full year, she'll do your hair for free. For one full year. Yeah. Also, we know you're into fitness and working out. You said when you had the baby, you were going to take her with you to work out, but you haven't been able to because of her health. But uh, the general manager, Anthony Osborne at Gold's Gym in Fairwood, is going to give you a free lifetime membership to Gold's Gym. I don't know if he's here, but I'd like a seven-day pass myself, bro. <laughs> we know some of the things that we're trying to do um, you know, some of the things that she needs are really kind of complicated. And so what we really want to do is to kind of give you some financial breathing room. And so we have a little check for you. It's just a little check that we like to give you. Can you hurry up and bring that up here? I suppose we, you know the service only 60 minutes. <laughs> now, nah, Claressa's holding a check for you. And we just thought this might help give you some breathing room. It's a check from Zion Church for $10,000. <laughs> let us see this and we're just trying to reverse this situation as much as we can but there are a couple of things we need your help with I'm gonna let Michelle tell you about two more things that this family could use uh, help with so if you we, please some of you may be here today we just believe that there's somebody here is gonna be able to help with this so you show two so, more things so there are two issues with um, Terry and Micah's situation one is the medical care that she receives she receives state assistance unfortunately with the state assistance um, it helps a lot with Mac with Micah's bills but at the same time Terry can only make a certain amount of money a month which is a very very low amount and so it keeps her at poverty level however there is a program called model waiver that only 200 children in the state of Maryland are available to apply for the challenge in their situation is that in order for her to apply for the model waiver program she has to let go of the SSI that she received with Social Security in Micah's situation her doctors have informed her that she can't afford not even one day of Micah not having medical care and so if you know of somebody within social services that can assist with advocating on their behalf for the model waiver program we really need you to be her eyes and ears for that the second thing is that she's on the brink honestly and, and she I know she's comfortably sharing this um, of her house being on for, in foreclosure her mortgage company is Chase and the situation is that the payments that she has to make right now is well beyond what social services will allow her to make on, um, social security will allow her to make on a month to month basis. And so she's in a modification, but they've kind of been dodging her a little bit. And so she needs advocates, places like NACA or any other place that is an aggressive housing um, advocacy program. She needs that kind of support. So we really ask that you would be her eyes and her ears for this. Amen. 